What's going on, YouTube? Welcome back to my channel. If y'all new, make sure y'all subscribe. I am Who K9, and today we're doing a reaction video. Today we were reacting to 15 most disturbing interviews with rappers of all time. Now I watch, I do watch a lot of interviews. I ain't gonna lie, so I watch interviews. So I need to see what they seeing, real for real. Like, what is, what is disturbing about these interviews? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? If you don't know what I'm saying, you don't know what I'm saying. But if y'all new to my channel, make sure y'all like and subscribe to me. But if y'all just watching the video, just leave a like. Drop the like down below. Yeah. Well, let's get straight into the video. <laughs> rapper pulling out a gun on an interviewer to another rapper beating one of his ops for talking sh during an interview. These are some of the most disturbing and disrespectful interviews with rappers of all time. Starting things off with Florida rapper broke as fuck. After dropping his breakout single, Comments, back in 2020, he's been making waves online, especially for his slight resemblance with NBA Youngboy. But outside the rap game, like Young Broke Boy has, yeah. has some huge <laughs> ties with gangs in the real world. He got shot in the chest, arm, and stomach during a tragic drive-by shootout. Damn, and ever since I then, he's been it. standing on business by keeping his strap closer than his enemies. During an interview with YouTuber and musical director, Hood Rich Kevin, Broke his came on high as a kite. And the interviewer didn't help matters by asking pretty dumb questions. But the real juice in this interview came when Hood Rich Kevin tried implicating Broke as f by asking some deep fed type questions, making Broke as f silence him with his gun. Damn bitch. And it even got weirder when the interviewer started asking Broke as f for his thoughts about Tupac's murder. But it definitely wasn't as weird as rapper Baby Lowe's getting asked about the Island Boys kissing on camera. Baby Lowe started making a name for himself back in 2020 after linking up with the Island Boys. He hung out with them so much that he got tagged as the fourth Island Boy. But during the interview, this guy dared to ask Lowe's if he saw the viral video of the Island Boys kissing each other. Gotta ask you, bro, like, this is everybody wants to know did you see the island boys kiss bruh that pissed him off making him flash his glock like hey, bruh stop doing that bruh like this interview ain't about that like it could go down in this interview bruh like he also threatened to take things south if the interviewer asked one more dumb question huh mm -hmm. and he trying to take it there with the interviewer Oh, could he ask the interview? Because the interviewer did his job asking him a question. Girl, what's wrong with these young boys? Do you want it to go down, yes or no? Nah, I'll feel you, bro. It's good, bro. It's good, bro. Coincidentally, it was the same interviewer who made broke his flash his strap. So I guess it's safe to say he needs to learn how to conduct a proper interview. Just like rapper Lil Kelpie needs to learn to keep his mouth shut to avoid getting beat up during an interview. California rappers Lil Kelpie and Almighty Suspect got invited to the No Jumper podcast. And at the start of the interview, Adam22 questioned Kelpie about his former YouTube program and the cops pulling over to his home with a search warrant. They were suspicious of you. Yeah, they, they were trying to say that I was like, you know, drug dealing or, or something like that. Okay. But well, you don't have a case as a result of this? Oh, uh, nah, I never heard back from him, honestly. Then it got a little dark when Adam asked Almighty Suspect for his opinion on Kelpie wearing a dollar chain and fur coat like a pimp on a prior interview he had done. Oh, this is what pimps is supposed to look like. I got my little dollar sign chain, my yeah, little fur coat. Them, to basically. get everybody to understand, yeah, because you, you, you pulled up in a pimp costume. Now things basically escalated from there, both rappers poking at each other until Suspect claimed no one knew who Kelpie was, and Kelpie replied by calling him a bitch. I'm Lil Who Kelpie, are you? Kelpie no the knows pimp. You. Kelpie the mother Kelpie the clown. <laughs> Who are you calling a bitch? He's talking about, about Kelpie the clown. <laughs> Damn, he spit on cut and everything, gang. Oh, he beat his ass. I ain't gonna lie. Bam. Just like that, these two got into a brawl. Members of the No Jumper crew plus security had to step in to break up the fight within seconds. But this was just one more reminder that a lot of crazy things go down on the No Jumper podcast. Like the time when No Jumper's Flacco and the guest 16 shot him began spitting on each other for some crazy stuff. Flacco blames 16 for something he pulled on Adam 22, and with 16 trying to defend himself, things got out of hand, and this happened. Bro, that's a, hey, stop bro. playing before I smack hey, bro, shit out. Do it. 
These niggas spitting on each other, they yellow word. That's not the worst thing that ever happened on this show, like the time Chicago rapper FBG Cash got killed just months after running his mouth at Lil Durk. And for some context here, FBG Cash took a disrespectful photo in front of the King Von mural painted on a wall around the Chicago apartment building in Parkway Gardens, where Von grew up. And not long after taking that photo, he went on No Jumper, detailing the conversation he had with Lil Durk to Adam-22. In his words, he said, What kind of conversation were you having before he told you to go take this photo? Me, you know, go, go over there and do that and see what happened to you. I'm like, I'm outside right now. You hit him up? Yeah. Well, that escalated things out of proportion as Lil Durk dropped a subtle diss to FBG Cash in his song, Computer Murderers, when he said, Sneaking pics by Von Mural like Lil Bro won't come out and spin. And just three months later, FBG Cash got smoked. Damn, I ain't never heard this. I ain't never even heard this song for them to put that together like this. 31 year old Tristan Hamilton performed under the name FBG Cash. This increased beef between both Southside groups, FBG and O'Block. And you ain't gonna say no, but y'all know who did it. Y'all know who got that man to do that. But is known for being a real street dude with a long rivalry with King Bond before he died. But once jumped Vaughn on a school bus and fought plenty of other dudes like LA Chief Key. Consciously confessed to the killing of another rival, O.D. Barry, that made Butta put himself in the spotlight for the wrong reasons. You stupid. What about what about the picture that take went? Take me to jail. Give me so, the cuffs. Yo, Butta. What I'll about the what jail. about the picture that went viral with Muwap wearing the with the duck sneakers? That's clown. After that interview, Butta got to sit down with Vlad for another interview, but this time he they be killing me with the ass, man. And OD's death on his deceased sister, K.I. They're saying that she was a shooter. That's the rule. I mean, it's it's footage. It's actually it's a, it's, a, it's a video of O.D. Perry getting killed. Yeah, he died. Yeah, yeah. And you saw it. I ain't seen nothing, man. I just heard the stories, bro. Okay. Folks believed he only did this to avoid getting probed for Odie's murder. Nonetheless, Butta may have not been telling the full truth here because on the night of August 10th, 2011, sometime before midnight, Odie Barry rode his bike over to a Swisher store and after getting some Swisher, was riding back to his apartment complex when a car pulled up beside him and a masked gunman came out, firing two shots at Odie and jumping back into the vehicle to speed off. And here's the thing. As Odie fell off his bike, some of his close friends rushed him to the hospital, where he died a few hours later. But when questioned by the cops, those eyewitnesses claimed the shooter was an African-American male. This disputes the idea that Butta's sister, K.I., took the drop on O.D. Now, speaking of getting dropped, this next rapper, BTB Savage, got shot dead after a disturbing interview with Vlad TV. Police are looking for the people who gunned down a San Antonio rapper in Houston last week. Family has identified the victim as Darrell Gentry, better known as BTB Savage. Some say the interview with Vlad led to his death, not only because he was killed four days after that video dropped on YouTube, but because he talked about how he and his girlfriend killed a man who local rapper had been trying to get a feature from him. So he agreed. However, when this rapper pulled up to Savage's apartment, he came with a car full of other dudes, one of whom was a guy named Omar Richardson. It was a weird situation, with this rapper and Omar looking over Savage's crib while sizing him up. They brought out some musical equipment and acted like they were about to start recording. sudden this rapper claimed he'd forgotten some stuff in his car and went outside to get it at this point savage knew these dudes were up to no good so he reached for his door to lock it however once he did that omar dude brought in his strap yelling for savage to take off his chains and other jewelry savage complied but as omar was about to grab him from the floor savage took the opportunity and tried wrestling omar to the ground Luckily for him, Omar's strap fell out of his hand, and this was the moment Savage yelled out to his girlfriend to come in and use the gun. She picked it up and popped Omar twice, but out of fear, dropped the gun again, allowing Omar to pick it up and fire three shots at her. Thankfully, they all missed, and Savage was able to get back in control. 
Now at this point, the rapper who wanted Savage's feature was outside shooting through the door with other gangbangers, and one of the bullets hit Savage while he was on the ground. But that's when Savage's girl held it down for him by firing two shots back at him, making them run away and leaving Omar to die. At this point, Omar was bleeding and losing consciousness fast. BTB Savage didn't want to kill him because his son was in there, but Omar was still trying to fight. So Savage's girl shot him two more times, killing him on the off on self-defense claims. Savage would go on to narrate everything like I just did in his interview with Vlad TV, with that video getting more than 3 million views in less than a week. But one thing in the interview stood out, and it was the way BTB Savage spoke about the incident. He was on that gangster don't mess with me type of sh and Vlad noticed that making him ask this question. I mean, are you at all concerned that his people are gonna try to come back? Yeah, they for sure might, they might do what they do, but I'm gonna get after it, that's all it is. And it is what it is. It's on the floor, it'll be smoked forever, fuck it. March 30th, 2023, Savage posted photos to his Twitter showing the floor of his apartment stained with Omar's blood. He also captioned the post, too much motion, basically trolling the dude. But just like Vlad suspected, Omar's people came back for vengeance. Just two hours after posting the photos, he was on his way to the airport to leave the city, as he kind of suspected Omar's people might have wanted to avenge his death that night. And as he drove in his Mercedes, his car was boxed by gunmen, and he was shot dead. And looking back at it, maybe it wasn't the interview that caused his death. Could have been the post was the trigger that made Omar's people pull the trigger. While we'll never know what truly went down in their minds, Kevin Gates' mentality might have to be questioned after he said in this interview that he wouldn't mind another dude hitting on his girl as long as she recorded it. If you know Kevin Gates, you know he's on some semen retention type stuff. As he says, it helps him keep glowing. While that may be true to some extent, his words to DJ Academics during this interview say otherwise. So you wouldn't be mad if another man penetrated a woman you were interested in or dealing with? No, because that's just dick. Me and I have a psychokinetic relationship. Our relationship is deeper than just sex. Kevin claims a lot of girls fantasize about that kind of stuff. It's a lot of women fantasize about that. They just have a fear of judgment. And I don't know really much about women. But what I do know is that Gucci Mane was mad disrespectful in an interview when talking about a body he dropped. Now, Gucci showed no remorse to Pookie Loke, whom he took out in self-defense back in 2015, but claimed he felt bad for other things during an interview with See the this bakery needs new equipment fast to keep up with demand. Some things that, I'm, that I, I wish I didn't do. Yeah. But I was young. I was young. But I, yeah, I did some things that's fucked up. Dead, dead wrong. So we, and everybody in the neighborhood know that, so I ain't no going around that. Even, even with the murder, even though it was self-defense, do you ever think about that? Do you think, like, maybe I could have handled that different, especially when you did, like, the diss record? And... He, did, he, he needed to be in the ground. Put his to be. He tried. And in the case of Kanye West, he straight up disrespected Sway Talk after Sway advised him to empower himself and work alone instead of collaborating with international fashion brands. Back in 2013, Kanye came on a Sway's radio show and publicly lobbied for support from Fortune 500 companies like Walt Disney, Nike, and Google to help him create more, as he claimed to be the number one most impactful artist of our generation. I am the number one most impactful artist of our generation. I am Shakespeare in the flesh. Walt Disney, Nike, Google. Now who's gonna be the Medici family and stand up and let me create more? Or do you wanna marginalize me till I'm out of my moment? Sway in turn recommended that West empower himself and invest in himself, to which West responded in one of his most viral moments saying I want to empower yourself and don't hmm. need them and do it yourself how fact, sway you take a few steps back to go you ain't got the answers man you ain't yeah. got the answers I, you, you ain't got you, the answers if you, if you, you ain't got the answers sway Kanye. i've been doing this more than you but a decade later it looked like sway had the answers as adidas and gap collaborated to destroy kanye's yeezy brand and on good morning america back in 2022 ye told the host lindsey davis and maybe Sway did have the answers back then. So Sway, almost 10 years ago, said, man, why don't you do it on your own? Was he right? You know what? I will go ahead and say 
Sway had the answer. And answers were what Adam 22 wanted after rapper Lil Dump kept throwing up on a No Jumper podcast. Anything in particular stand out? Some say it could have been the pills he was popping before the interview, but when Adam 22 asked, he denied being on anything. So what just happened? Hmm. What just happened? For Some deep in life that, you know. I'd rather not talk about it, but. But I'm just talking about you puking or like the fact that you're kind of drunk, right? No, I ain't drunk. I'm sober. You're sober? No alcohol. That's not what's up in that cup. I just kind of assumed it was alcohol. It was. Oh, okay. Whether or not that was true, Lil Dump was featured in a 20B1 YouTube video where he said, you know what, just listen to it yourself. So why are you standing like that? <laughs> Stand up straight. You gotta be louder, like... I did no drugs. Me too. That's not... Okay. I know. Hopefully, Lil Dump gets the help he needs. Speaking of help, this interview with Lil Wayne got him talking about how he almost took his life due to him dealing with some mental issues. And the crazy thing is, it happened when he was just 12 years old. In this interview with Emmanuel Acho, Wayne revealed that back when his high school calendar was coming towards the end, he got to go to school on Thursdays and Fridays as a half day. But instead, he lied to his mom that he only got one half day and would take the other day completely off to focus on spitting bars and making music. But somehow his mom found out and his aunt gave him a call telling him he was going to get whooped once his mom got home. Phone call from my aunt was like, she found out, but you about to get your ass kicked and all that rapping and all that. She about to take that rap photo. She about to throw that shit away. She about to, and I was like, wow. So all that had built up to me. So that was a build up. And the next thing you know, Wayne attempted to take his own life. I picked up the phone. I called the police. Yes, I knew where she kept her gun. And it was in her bedroom. And so I went in the bedroom, grabbed the gun. How I know I had mental health problems was I pulled the trigger. You actually pulled the trigger? Yeah, I pulled the trigger. It was a white cop named Uncle Bob who eventually saved him by rushing him to the hospital. Moving on, you've probably seen the news about the whole P. Diddy controversy. But what you might have not seen is this interview from The Game, where he talked about the gay stuff going on in the industry years before Diddy got exposed. No Diddy. Way back in 2011, Compton rapper The Game did this interview centered around gay rappers and artists in the industry. Look at gays in the entertainment business. Yeah, they're around. They're around. The Game said he had a problem with them dudes who'd be gay and hiding in the closet, but also said he didn't have a problem with gay people in general. No, game don't have a problem with gay people. Game has a problem with people that are pretending not to be gay, but that are, trying, you know, that are gay. Keep in mind that The Game and Diddy used to kick it back in the day. And at one point, the game's own brother, Big Phase 100, uploaded a now-deleted IG post of Diddy hugging the game from behind, suggesting the two were more than just friends, as the game claimed during his interview on Drink Champs. And referring back to his interview with Vlad, the game claimed he might have worked with a rapper who was actually gay. So, so you think that you've worked with a, with a gay rapper? Yeah, and, and gay, not being just full-out gay, but hiding, trying to pretend like he, you know, loves girls and lives the rap lifestyle, but really, he's a man fan. The game's brother suggested with that IG post that his brother only attained great heights in his rap career because of his relationship with Diddy and not his street credibility. But street cred was also the center of discussion in this interview, featuring DJ Academics and Takashi 6 9 where Takashi dissed all of them dead rappers. We're told the success. The King Bond died lacking. Nipsey died lacking. Pop Smoke died lacking. Right. So this can't lack? No, you can't. All right. Killer be killed in these streets. All right. Some dude named Hassan claimed during an interview that if he was in 69's position, he wouldn't have snitched, but refused to admit to the fact that he would have done the time instead. In 6 ix opinion, he didn't feel the need to be loyal to his gang members because them dudes weren't even loyal to him. If, 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 if you was in that position, what you would have done? For me, you gotta understand. Nah, nah, like, I don't listen, answer the question. I would never tell. All right, so, 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 this is what I'm saying. If you was in that position, you would have did that, Tom? My whole thing is like nah, this. Nah, yo, yo, bro, let me, let me, yes or no? This is gonna make like, it spicy. Go, all right, go ahead. If, if this is gonna make it spicy, right, cool. see, my whole thing is like this, right? If I was in your position, 
and, and Nuke and Hoff would have... Everybody can say, shit, the fact that listen, you listen, didn't listen, say no, listen, let listen, me know listen, that you would have did the same listen, shit he did. Yo, 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 hold up, hold up, hold up. Yo. 69 also made a point that all rappers claim never to be caught lacking until they actually do get caught lacking and probably wind up dead or incarcerated. And that perfectly explains how G Money lost his life after talking crazy about NBA Youngboy's sister in this interview with Say Cheese. Now, G Money and NBA used to be locked in until Youngboy started doing his own thing. And then G Money claimed in the interview that Youngboy was still mad about his relationship with Youngboy's sister. Hey, but I mean, it ain't, so it, it ain't just nothing real major. Like, it ain't no real. I don't really have differences like that in this. Not really. He mad, he mad about his sister, too, though. And for context, G Money claimed he slept with Youngboy's sister way back when they were all cool. But once YB got famous, he started tripping about it, and it fueled their beef. G Money would then drop a song titled Industry, where he straight up dissed YB and his sister by saying, and I quote, All you niggas blame, sneak dissing on them songs. Your sister swallowed nut, so I never kissed her. But I f***ed her, so I never dissed her. You a bitch, I know the real you. And just two weeks after this song dropped, G Money was taken out. YB never got blamed for that murder. A word on the street suggests that he did the job. And since we've mentioned No Jumper so many times in this video already, it's only right we talk about one of the craziest moments that ever occurred on that podcast, where Adam22 almost got robbed during recording. For some reason, the dude didn't pull the trigger, and while many say that was probably because he was holding a fake gun, Adam-22 security stepped in and pinned that dude to the ground. And if you thought that was crazy, check out some of these other videos showing right now.